Dwayne Comer here, owner and founder of KMD 89 VA Claims Consulting. Leave no vet behind and bring you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. Uh, before I get into uh, the new topic that I want to be discussing today, I want to uh, add a couple uh, issues or a couple of statements from my previous video, which was a CUE. Clear and, unmistakable, uh, clear and unmistakable error. And the two things that I left out that I did want to discuss in that previous video was one, uh, a CUE has no time limit. Uh, there's no time limit on when you uh, can claim a CUE uh, on a particular rating decision. Unlike uh, an appeal or high level review, you have one year from the date of the denial, date of notification letter that you received um, that notice on that particular rating decision, you have to appeal or file a high level review. Uh, CUE, there's no time limit, but just know that if you go back and you have look at a rating that you received, let's say in uh, the year 2000, um, and you call the CUE, then you obviously have to look at the rating scheduler, the, uh, the, uh, the old rating schedule scheduler, uh, because there may be uh, some outdated or updated um, criteria as it pertains to a 0, 10, 20, 30 percent or what have you. Also, as it pertains to a CUE, there's no specific form that you need to complete to send in. It could be on a written document. It could be on a VA form 21-4138. It could be on a VA form 21-526EZ, uh, uh, or you can just write it on uh, a letterhead. Uh, when I did my um, uh, initial uh, clear and unmistakable error, I just did it on a 526EZ. Uh, that way, whoever, when the VSR got it, I didn't want them just to discard the letter that I sent and just be sending my claims folder and no one ever take an issue with it. So I submitted mine on a VA form 21-526EZ, uh, but that's uh, totally uh, up to you uh, what form you want to use uh, to submit that CUE, okay? Uh, and then another topic, uh, something else before I get into the, uh, the topic I'm, I'm going to be discussing today is I know other, I did another video where I was telling a little bit about myself uh, and why I do what I do, but I've been getting a lot of comments since then uh, still asking me, you know, why do I... Uh, educate veterans on the VA disability compensation claims process. And there are many reasons, but the ones that um, really stick out uh, is one, I don't want anyone to go through what I went through, okay? When I was working my claim, I was a rating specialist. I was very frustrated. I felt um, my, my claim was very clear, and the person that was reviewing my claim still kept saying no, even though I was following all the VA regulations and guidelines. So one, I, I don't want anyone to go through what I want, went through and I don't want anyone to wait the 12, 10, uh, 12 years like I did not knowing that I can even file a claim. So I'm trying to reach as many veterans as I can and inform them not only on the process, but letting them know that, you know, if they meet the five ways of service connection, they can also get the, uh, VA compensation uh, from the VA. Uh, and another reason why I was thinking about this the other night was there's, you know, when I, when a client comes on, you know, I educate the client on the VA claims process, I always, you know, at the end, I always tell them, say, hey, you know, if you know another veteran or someone or a dependent of a veteran that's taking care of that particular veteran, if you know of anyone that wants to become educated on this process, have them give me a call. And... About a year ago, I was talking with the individual who was a veteran, and I, I would see this individual not on a daily basis, but I would say maybe once or twice a week. And they would always ask me about the VA claims process, okay? And I, I didn't have a problem telling them, you know, these had questions like, you know, what does this mean? Um, what are some of the claim forms? You know, uh, what are the, you know, why do you submit this particular claim form? Or what is this condition? And, you know, just general questions, you know. Didn't have a problem answering those questions. Um, once that particular person became, you know, they were able to get 
And I remember talking to him. Uh, we were texting, actually. And I said, hey, you know, if you happen to just know anybody, they said they were working around, you know, uh, they knew other vets. And I said, you know, uh, if, you, you know if anybody there you know, wants to get educated, they have to give me a call. And the response was, uh, the response was, and it totally shocked me. It, it really did. Um, but the response was, I'm just tired of um, other people just getting money just to get money. And I, I, I paused. I had, to, I had literally, I had to pause before I responded to that. And I responded by saying, "Well, you know, you were able to achieve 100 percent. Not everybody was a, is is or was able to achieve 100 percent. And you don't want other veterans to get compensated for possibly some of the same conditions you're getting compensated for." just because you personally feel these veterans are just out here just trying to get money. But you went after your percentage. So they kind of left, um, you know, it was not a sour taste in my mouth. I guess it did, but it was just more so upsetting. Um, and, you know, if you've been to my website, my slogan is leave no vet behind. And I truly believe that. I have a passion for what I do because I don't want anybody to feel uh, like I did, like the VA uh, turned their back uh, on me. And, you know, so when I heard that, I, I was <laughs> I was shocked. You know, I was kind of shocked. Um, but, you know, it just added a little bit of fuel to the fire. But I want everybody that sees this video to listen to their last statement I, that I made. Um, he, you know, the particular veteran didn't, you know, he was like, I, I'm, I don't want, I'm just tired of hearing people get money just to get money. Think about that for a second. Just, you know, let it resonate. And I'm like, this is a veteran. You know, so when I look, you know, when I, when I talk to veterans and if it's somebody that did 30 years, and out of those 30 years, they were uh, special operations, a special operator, you know, or if they were uh, a cook that only did, you know, a year and they had to be medically discharged because uh, a tub of hot grease fell on them and burnt, you know, 45% of their body, or if it was someone that was sexually assaulted um, and was claiming military sexual trauma, I don't care what it is. A veteran received an injury or a diagnosis or something on active duty, and now they're seeking compensation. I don't care. They're a veteran. If they meet the qualifications, I'm going to educate them on this VA claims process, okay? Never in a day that I thought that, oh, this individual is, you know, just trying to get X, Y, and Z. No, it's not going to happen. Even when I was a rating specialist, I would see full bird colonels come in 100% getting, you know, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars of retirement a month, and they were coming in for something that wasn't going to change their evaluation. Now, it didn't matter to me. They're still a vet. It doesn't matter. So, you know, I just wanted to share that uh, with, you know, all the subscribers and anybody else that looks at this um, YouTube video. And I'll, I just kind of, I was, you know, yesterday I was, you know, sitting at home, and I was thinking about it, and, you know, I was getting some comments. So I just wanted to share that with you. But don't mean to be a Debbie Downer. Let's get into the next topic. And today I'm going to be discussing RFEs, also known as routine future exams, RFEs. A lot of people, um, a lot of veterans don't know what this is. Again, when they get their rating decision, they don't look for certain uh, verbiage in it to see if they have a routine future. When you receive a rating decision, there's also something called a rating code sheet. You've probably heard me talk about it before. That is the last two, three, four pages, however long that rating code sheet is, that's on the back of your rating decision. Now, the VA doesn't send you that rating code sheet, and there's a lot of valuable information on that rating code sheet. It has um, the diagnostic code that was assigned for the diagnosis that uh, they service connected you for, the diagnosis, uh, the actual diagnosis, the percentage and the effective date 
of that percentage. Also, if you initially received 10% for a bad condition, it'll have that effective date. And then if you came in later for an increase and you were granted 20%, it'll have that effective date. And right under the last um, effective date for that particular condition, it'll have an RFE date, okay? And that's the routine future date uh, for that uh, particular condition. So again, I'm going. It's uh, two regulations I'm going to provide, and I'm going to, I'm, uh, that I'm going to provide you, and I'm going to put them in the description section. But one I, I want to read, um, and this is the, uh, from the M21. Okay, and there are several regulations as it pertains to RFE, but I just picked two uh, for what I'm talking about today. Okay, so the first one, criteria for re criteria for requesting review examinations. One. There is a need to verify either the, either the continued existence or the current severity of a disability. It is likely that the disability has improved. Evidence indicate there has been a, a material change in a disability. The current rating may be incorrect or it is otherwise required by the regulation or diagnostic code under which the veteran is service connected. Okay, so that last one what that means is, let's just, for example, okay, all cancers, all cancers, nine times out of ten, when a vet gets, a uh, di veteran gets diagnosis, let's just say prostate cancer, okay, there's going to be a routine future, maybe six months or even 12 months, especially if they're on some type of uh, treatment, chemotherapy or seed implants or something like that, okay, and the reason why that is, once that cancer goes into remission, then the rating specialist has to rate on the residuals. So, for example, prostate cancer. If it goes into remission, the, some of the residuals are voiding dysfunction, um, urinary frequency, you know, depending on how many times you have to use the bathroom during the day, how many times you have to use the bathroom at night, if you have to wear absorbent materials, those are the residuals, okay? But as long as that cancer is active or, <clears throat> excuse me, malignant or, or um, the veteran is receiving some type of treatment, they'll stay at 100%. And again, the rating specialist will um, uh, do a routine future, maybe 6 to 12 months. It just depends on uh, how many times the veteran hit that particular, uh, had uh, previous RFEs. But if that cancer has now been deemed uh, terminal or the vet is not going to uh, recover from that, then the, the rating specialist can go ahead and keep the, um, the cancer, uh, service-connected cancer condition at 100% and grant permanent and total, Chapter 35, okay? So that's very, it's very important. The second, um, the second uh, regulation states when not to schedule a review examination. This is very important. In verbatim, it says, do not establish a future examination control in cases when the disability is static without material improvement over five years. So static means uh, the rating specialist looked at it and they just deemed that, you know, it's, it's permanent in nature, okay? The second one, the disability is permanent in character and such nature that there is no likelihood of improvement. So I gave you one of those examples of prostate cancer, okay, if the vet is terminally ill. Now, let's say that you get a disability benefit questionnaire, DBQ completed by your uh, private physician, okay, um, and it's for just any condition outside of cancer. On that DBQ, the doctor can put if they feel the condition is permanent, okay? Let's take PTSD, for example. Let's say there's a veteran that's 27 years old, service connected for PTSD of 50%, comes in uh, for increase, submits a DBQ from a private psychiatrist or psychologist, and on that DBQ, um, it notes he should be granted 70%, and the doctor noted that uh, the condition is permanent. At that time, the rating specialist, unless they have other evidence somewhere showing 
that there is a likelihood of improvement, they should not schedule a routine future. That's what that means, okay? Uh, permanent in character. So permanent in character or permanent in nature. The third one, when not to uh, schedule uh, a review examination, the veteran is over 55. I cannot tell you how many times that uh, some of my peers, when I was a rating specialist, just because the veteran wasn't 55, they scheduled a routine future exam. Just because they wasn't, the, vet, the veteran was not 55. The regula regulation doesn't state if the veteran is under 55, scheduled a routine future. It says just if the veteran is 55 or older. Now let's just say the veteran is going to be 55 um, in the next 12 months. And the rating specialist is looking at granting a higher evaluation, but scheduling a routine future in 12 months. By the time that veteran has that routine future, the veteran is going to be 55. So they still shouldn't schedule a routine future exam. Okay? Uh, but sometimes they do. But there's a lot of variables or situations that may occur where the veteran may be on the cusp or borderline uh, whether they should have a routine future exam or not, okay? Um, the fourth one, the evaluation is, is prescribed schedule a minimum within his diagnostic code. So, for example, uh, there's uh, the minimum evaluation of 0%, okay? Why would you need a routine future on a 0%? It's 0%. There's no other percentage lower than that, okay? Or if it's 10%. If there's, um, if it's 10 percent, same thing. You know, you don't schedule a routine future, and that's the next one. The valuation is 10 percent or less. So 10 or zero, do not schedule a routine future. Okay. Uh, I remember when I was a range specialist, and for some reason, I, you know, I hardly ever schedule routine futures. I'm not a doctor. It had to be some information there that just jumped out at me that. Uh, that I would schedule a routine future, but for some reason, one day it was a knee condition, and I scheduled a routine future. The quality department pulled it and gave me an error, okay? And so the only thing I had to do is go back. I didn't have to notify the vet. I just had to remove that routine future um, exam for that 10% condition, uh, but it still was an error against me, a CUE, actually. Oh, well, yeah, CUE. The last one. The combined evaluation will not change even if the re-examination resulted in a reduced evaluation for one or more disabilities. Let me read that again. The combined evaluation would not change even if the re-examination resulted in a reduced evaluation for one or more disabilities. So let's just say the veteran is 70%. And you come in and the veteran is service connected for 20% for whatever condition the rating specialist uh, signed the RFE. And if the vet was to go to that exam and that exam comes back and shows the veteran should be 10%, once you combine all the evaluations for each condition, if you reduce that veteran from 20 to 10 for that particular condition and that vet remains at 70, do not schedule a routine future exam. One is not supposed to be scheduled, okay? Now, you may be asking yourself, well, how do I know if I have a routine future? There's a couple of ways. One, and I talked about in the CUE um, um, video that I just previously did, is in the narrative section of the rating decision, this, the sentence will start since there's a likelihood of improvement. If you see that, you have a routine future for that particular condition. Second way, you can request, through a FOIA request, the Freedom of Information Act, you can request a copy of your claim, the entire v electronic VA claims file to include the rating code sheet. And on that rating code sheet, it will tell you which conditions you have a routine future for. Or you can go, if you have a POA, a, a, a power of attorney, a VSO, a veteran service organization, you can contact them and say, hey, can you look at my my last rating uh, and look at the rating code sheet to see if I have any routine futures if, you, if it's still unclear at that point. And they, if, if they know what they're doing, then they can go into the electronic claim file as your representative, look at the rating code sheet, 
and tell you exactly which conditions you have a, um, a routine future for, okay? So again, it's very important that you get educated uh, on the VA claims process, understand how to read the rate decision, and understand how you can find out if you have a routine future exam for a particular condition. Um, I, I ran into a couple of vets one time, or even if I'm just talking to a veteran, they say, oh yeah, I'm 100%. I ask them, I say, oh, you're permanent in total. Have you been granted Chapter 35 benefits? And they say, well, what's that? Well, that lets me know that they're just 100% and they have routine futures because if you're 100%, you'll know if you have uh, been granted permanent total Chapter 35 benefits because there's other additional benefits if you have been granted Chapter 35 benefits. You know, for example, no property tax, discharge of um, uh, student loans. Uh, if your child go, uh, if your child is on your ward before they turn 18, once they graduate from high school, if they go to college, then the federal government will give them a monthly stipend, and depending on the state that you live in that state will pay their tuition if they go to a state-recognized school. So trust me, most vets, they know, if they're 100%, they know if they've been granted Chapter 35 benefits. But these two individuals, when I asked them, they had no clue. They've been getting paid 100% for the last three, two, three years and never was getting Chapter 35 benefits. One veteran, both of them had student loans that they could have had discharged. One veteran owned a home. Here in Florida, his property tax, I think it was like $12,000, $13,000 a year. And he had been paying that for the last three years, you know. Um, and he was like, well, I have all these conditions. They're not going to get better. They, they're only getting worse. You know, but the vet, the, that particular veteran wasn't educated, didn't know, you know, didn't read the rating decision to see, uh, to look at those statements since there was a likelihood of improvement. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 every time I talk to someone, that's one of the things I ask them. They say, oh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm 100%. You chapter 35, P and T, uh, what's that? Then we have that conversation. And when I explain it to them, they're, they're just totally shocked. So, again, you know, if you're watching this video, go back and look at some of my other videos. Educate yourself on this process. It could be frustrating. It could be confusing. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to become educated. So make sure you get educated and don't be frustrated, okay? So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, hit that notification button, hit that like button as well. And I'm going to leave um, my uh, website, kmd89.com, that's kilo mike delta 89com I'm going to leave that in the description section. And if you have, you know, any questions or something like that, feel free to leave a comment or uh, you can schedule a consultation on my website or send me feedback on my website and I'll reach out to you so I can get any of those questions answered. So again, thank you uh, for watching this video. Please be safe during this whole coronavirus. Thank you for your service. Be safe. See you in the next video. Thank you.